All right, thanks for hanging with me. We're now on part three of the stamp handle design. So we've got our, our base part strong and we've got the handle circle here. Now we're gonna, in, in the same manner that we created guidelines for all these new details that we added, we're going to add a couple more guidelines. The ones that we really need are gonna be the ones on this square right here, right here, right here, and right here. Um, something to note, if you copy and paste a guideline, sometimes it becomes printable. Um, so it would actually cut out on your laser. So be careful doing that. Always drag new guidelines out. Um, it usually, if you copy and paste, it'll give you some warn warning message. But you just want to be aware of that, that that's, that's what can happen. So anyway, I'm just going to create a sample rectangle down here just so I can visually see the... Uh, what the base would look like if this was if this was my base and I think I had 0 .116 as as being my thickness so we need to decide how tall we want our handle to be now you can customize this any way you want but in for my case total height from the very bottom of the base portion to the top of the notch I made mine it looks like 2.15 uh, so what I'm gonna do is drag a guideline down here to the top of my base and I'm gonna put in a 2.15 as being my height for my handle okay cool so now there's a couple of things I can do I know that the that this square lines up with the notch it's gonna to have to match on on that little blade piece that holds the handle together uh, so if that's the case, I'm going to come from this guideline down the point 116, and that will give me enough room for that notch to go inside that uh, square hole. So let me create a new guideline, set it right on top of this one. And I'm going to change my nudge distance point 116, bring that down. So it's kind of hard to visualize, but this right here is going to be that notch sticking up on each side of my little blade piece. Okay, so that means that I'm going to have a line that's going to come from here to here. And then I need some sort of line to come down to this piece. Now, you could just do that as just a straight line. You could do it as some sort of art. Um, I'm going to use the B-spline tool in just a moment, but I want to look at something. I want to try to see where this matches up. It looks like it's just kind of halfway in between between those pieces. Actually, it looks like it's about the same amount as you have on this side, which if you remember, we came down a quarter of an inch off of off of this guideline that we had right here. We came down a quarter of an inch offset. Uh, so if I do a quarter of an inch from this line over, that's going to place me exactly where I want to be on that blade. Um, it might be get a bit confusing with this guideline here in place. So I'm going to temporarily get rid of those. I'm going to place a new guideline right on top of this one here. I'm going to set my nudge distance to 0.25. When I nudge that over, that's where that line should hit. So with that in place, I'm going to swap to my B spline. I'm going to click right here. And then this is where you just want to kind of style it the way you like. I'm going to come down, click. Let's see. I'm going to do one click here, and then I'm just going to come down straight. And now when I get to the end of that, I've clicked my last time, I hit enter, and I've got that nice B spline. Now, what I like to do here is copy and paste, and then just do a quick mirror of that, and then I can move it with this node right to the other side, exactly where I want, which would be right there. Okay. Now, we already placed the line right here. Um, I don't like how I did that, so I'm going to go ahead and place a two-point line. It goes all the way from this node to this node. And then I'm going to use my uh, virtual segment delete tool to trim out the parts in between that I don't want. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so now there's only a couple of things left to do on this. If I look where this guideline matches the T-slot, it goes right there, so I can use my virtual segment to delete, delete to get rid of those parts. Um, I can actually go ahead and get rid of this part here. I might have to add something there in a little bit. Let's see. 
I'm gonna use my two point line to connect this in right here. Two point line to connect that in right there. And the only thing left to do on this particular piece now is to have that notch cut out, which is gonna end up looking like one of these. So if this is my T part, I made my notch coming from the bottom. Um, so I could measure this and figure out what that distance is, or I could just place a guideline somewhere somewhere close. I think I probably used like one inch or something. So I'm just gonna place a one inch guideline there. And then I'm gonna draw with my rectangle tool, this rectangle that sits right there. And I'm gonna notch this out with my, oh, sorry about that. My virtual segment delete tool. There we go. And whenever I create an object like this that I want to be one object by itself, I like to use my selection tool to highlight the whole thing and then use my boundary, create boundary. And then you can see that that now is a perfect enclosed object. I could fill it if I wanted to. Um, I could do anything that I want. Um, another thing you can do is you can use the smart fill tool to fill that in and then move that out to the side if you want. Um, and that can become your object. If you don't do that though, these are all still individual lines and pieces that could get moved around later. So uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just move this out to the side. Whoop, sorry about that. I'll move this out to the side and then I can move this one to its location. Uh, that might be a little tricky because I just got rid of my guidelines that I had for that. Anyway, I'll just leave this one here for now. Whenever I want to in, to cut this, I'll just make sure I use the one that um, that is an enclosed object. All right, I'm going to stop this video and then uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Sorry that this one was so long.